Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode uh, f one of Let's Play Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. Oh yeah. Oh, so this is going to be just a little short, casual project that I do alongside Wind Waker and Kirby's Epic Yarn. Of course, if you ever played Zelda 2, then you know I'm using the word casual very loosely there, because it is probably one of the hardest Zelda games out there, if not the hardest. And if you've ever played any other Zelda games, but not this one, I'm sure you'll be, like, shocked by the magnitude of difference between this and every other Zelda game out there. It's so different, like, a lot of people didn't like it because it was so different, but... Uh, I don't know. It's personally one of my favorites. And it just proves that Zelda can work in many different gameplay styles. This is the story, I don't think I need to read that, because I'm sure you can read yourself. Besides, it's just like the story of like the very first game, which is pretty much known worldwide at this point. 1987 Nintendo. So this game came out seven years before I was born. That's crazy to think about. Anyway, so here we go. Register our name as Argon, of course, so that's typical tradition. And get ready to be blown away. Well, not really, not really blown away, it's just kind of weird. We have three lives, and this is... This is basically how you're, the game is going to be played most of the time. It's in this side-scrolling way, and you can, like, jump and everything. And there's so much to explain here. Uh, you'll maneuver through the overworld like this, with this overhead view, which is pretty typical for, like, the since it was, like, the same as the very first Zelda game. But this, like, side-scrolling section is kind of just weird. Uh, and it's actually what makes the game so much harder is that, like, I don't know. There's just a lot less maneuverability somehow. Even though there's plenty more maneuverability, it just feels more restricted somehow. Is it a magic container that'll increase your maximum magic capacity? You have to explain all that crap at the top of the screen now, don't I? So at the far, so you have like your attack power at the far left, and then going right from there, you have your magic bar, your life bar, and your experience. Now, magic and life, like, those are pretty much self-explanatory. Magic is, like, your stamina for spells, which you will learn throughout the game. And life is how much life you have instead of, like, hearts. It's just that. Then your attack power is, that's pretty much just how much damage you can do to every enemy. And that will increase throughout the game. As will the life and magic levels, by the way, with your experience. Like, you can see, I need 50 experience for my next level. And then once you get there, you'll get to like choose whether or not to gain your next level or pass up pass up on it and save for a different level because like 50 experience like not each one of your skills will cost the same amount per level I don't know how to describe that well talk with my father before you leave town yeah if you ever see someone walk out of a house be sure to talk to them because this is where you're gonna be learning most of your spells are in houses like this each town has a wise man Learn from him. Yup. Oh, uh, so like I was saying before, you're gonna be uh, leveling up, and you can level up to a maximum level of eight in each each one of the categories. And yeah, here we're learning our first magic spell, which is gonna be the shield, which is downright one of the most useful spells in the game. Probably the most useful, right next to life. Mm-hmm. And right now it costs 32 magic to cast, but as your magic level increases, it will cost less and less until it reaches a minimum point, with it, which I think is 16. And basically each one of those squares of magic is 16 magic. So, it'll cost one of those bars. Alright. Man, there's so much crap to explain. Like, I'm sure you're, this is totally confusing if you've never seen or played any of this game. Alright, these are pea bags. These will give you a certain amount of experience, usually 50, but it can vary. And see, now my life goes up. When your life goes up, you're, like, it doesn't actually give you a heart container or anything. It doesn't increase your stamina. It, it just allows you to take more hits, which I guess is the same as increasing your stamina, but... I don't know, it's just kind of weird, because there are heart containers in this game, but there's also the life level up system. And these little jars, those will fill up 16 magic, the blue ones. There are, red, there are red magic jars, too, which will fill up all of their magic bar, regardless of how much you've lost. Oh, these spiders can be kind of annoying. Yup. Yeah, and like you've been seeing, uh, you run into monsters, 
like, you can run into them in these caves and stuff, too. You gotta watch out for those guys, because these caves are dark. You'll be able to light them up once you get the lantern from the first palace. But on the overworld here, there will be monsters that appear when you're not walking on the yellow road. And there's, like, two different var variations of monsters. There's the slimes, the little, like, bots or whatever they're called. And then there's the ones that look, that look like Ganon, like this. And the Ganon ones, there's those are the hard monster encounters. But, like, see, uh... You saw before that in the desert, this stage when you run into an easy monster encounter, which is the little slimes, there's just these uh, rocks flying around. But now in the hard one, there's actually these worms and some bots in there. Yeah, so that's basically the main difference, and uh, uh, you can't avoid them. You can also use them to your advantage, too. There's also some points on the map like this where you just run onto it, and you'll be thrust into this. But if you touch a monster on the overworld at the same time that you walk on po to one of these predetermined squares, then you'll actually bypass the predetermined square and just fight the monsters instead. And you'll still buy and you'll still get past that point. Yeah, oh crap, I shouldn't have picked that up right away because, yeah, he's going to hit me. <laughs> yeah, you, you really should kill this guy before you uh, pick up that heart container. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much all I need to explain at this point. You're just, now it's just kind of a... I don't know, it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing here. So, it's, it's, I think it's kind of a just self-explanatory. If you ever get a chance to play the game, it's a lot more simple to understand. I'm sure I made it sound way more complicated than it actually is. But that's basically the gist of this game. Like I said, it's very hard, so don't expect me to be doing like a, <laughs> a no-death run or anything here. Because, like, I've never done a single run of this game where I haven't gotten at least one game over. Here we have the first palace, by the way. What time I have to do? Just seven minutes? That's not bad. Not bad at all. And the pa in the palaces, the monsters are going to be a lot different than they are in the overworld for the most part. Like, these guys. These guys don't actually give you any experience. But, um, if they hit you, they'll actually take your experience away along with some life. So be sure not to let that happen. Alright, these guys are annoying because they're so unpredictable for when they jump. Sometimes they jump like three times in a row without even like stopping to relax at any point. Those guys aren't too bad. As long as you like duck and stab at them and you just keep advancing on them, you should you should be fine. Sometimes you'll take one or two hits. Yeah. And then the number that floats up from the monster when you kill them, that's the amount of experience you get for killing the monster. And like I pointed out a little bit before, briefly, there's also pea bags. Sometimes pea bags will be found in those predetermined plots of land on the overworld, like I found one earlier like that. But sometimes monsters will actually drop pea bags too. I think like every five or six monsters drops either a pea bag or a magic refill. And um, basically the way it works is that if the monster gives you less than I think 30 experience, They'll drop a pea bag worth 50 experience or a blue uh, or a blue magic refill. But if they give you more than 30 experience, they'll drop a pea bag worth 200 experience and or a red magic jar, which will refill your magic completely. So it's really worth your while to kill all the enemies you come across because you're going to need all the experience you can get. And you don't have to like max out your levels for, by the end of the game. It's just highly recommended that you do. If you want to see some, like, major skill, though, when you, like, don't max out all your levels, go... I think, uh, Nintendo Capri Sun has a... a level 1 attack run of Zelda 2 on his screw attack account. Oh, I need to watch that thing someday. I haven't watched the whole thing. I've watched, like, the first part of it. Yeah. Oh, there's a fairy over here if you need it, by the way. I don't really need it right now. There's still plenty of this palace to go. Plenty more opportunities for me to take damage here, so... Oh, I don't want to be too preemptive with that fairy taking. Yeah, careful of this guy, because if you actually hop up here, you won't have enough time to stab your sword, because Link has to actually, like, recoil his sword before he stabs it. And so you'll, you're will you likely to get hit if you actually land up there before trying to stab that guy, so just try to stab him mid-jump. If that makes any sense, which I'm sure it doesn't. Oh, and then, we, of course, we got this guy. He's, the, like, the hammer brother in this game. Crap. Usually there's like a certain point that uh, like there's a there's a spot where he takes a break in between throwing these little 
clubs that he's throwing. And it's kind of hard to distinguish because he throws them all at varying altitudes. So, but you have to try and get right between that, right in the spot where he's taking his break. That's when you have to walk in and try to get at him. Once you get there, there's really no big deal. There's a full magic refill if you need it. I haven't used anything yet, so I don't really need it. Uh, I don't know if I showed this off either, but there's a statue at the entrance to every uh, palace. And I think all of them except for palaces 1 and 5 will, when you stab the statue, you'll either get a magic refill or you'll have to fight an iron knuckle. I don't know why just 1 and 5. Like, I get maybe 1 that that trick doesn't work, but why palace number 5? That just never made any sense to me. Right, these bubbles too. Don't try to kill them because at this point with level 1 attack, I'm pretty sure they'll take more than 100 hits to kill. Like, seriously, they're super bulky. Bulky. They're going to need... If you want to kill them efficiently, you're probably going to need at least level 4 attack and the downward thrust. Oh, man. Okay, I hate this room so much. This is so annoying. Because there's all these bubbles everywhere. And if these bubbles hit you too, they actually take away some of your magic. So you have to be really careful. But also you can stab them. And I didn't really show it off there. But if you stab them, then you can actually walk right through them. So that's kind of useful. Right? Oh, and this bridge is going to collapse, so watch out! Watch out! Don't be be careful not to fall in the lava down there. Because I'm sure that would hurt quite a bit. You have to be pretty quick in getting that pee bag. But it's not, it's not as hard as it looks, trust me. <laughs> Alright, in this room, um, I think we're going to come, come across our first iron knuckle in this room. I'm just going to use shield, just because I typically do. Yeah, we got another one of these Hammer Brother guys. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. They kind of look like, a. Uh, those rock people from the cavity commercials, whatever they are. Oh, I don't know. The ones that, like, bore holes in your teeth. Those commercials are so old, though. <laughs> I feel so old that I'm, like, able to reference those. Even though I shouldn't be able to reference those. That guy, that Ham Brother guy, he'll actually drop a, either a pee bag or a magic refill pretty much every time. Like, I've never seen him drop, like, not drop anything else. Or, or drop anything else, like just give experience. He always drops either a pee bag or a magic refill. Right, and this is basically your strategy for dealing with iron knuckles, is that you want to jump at them and stab them, like, in midair. Here's your candle, by the way, this will light up dark caverns. But you want to stab them as you approach their head, and basically there's no way that they can defend that, but right after you do that, they're going to stab at you, so be sure to retreat right after you do that. And then once, you, and then, that's basically it, you just have to do that, like, with level 1 attack, or well, I guess I have level 2 attack now, don't I? Jeez, I'm getting these levels so fast that I'm not even able to keep track of them. Of course, later in the game, you're actually going to need, like, thousands of experience in order to gain levels, so it's going to go by a lot slower than it is right now. Alright, careful of this fast bubble here. I'd recommend just stopping here and letting him do his thing so he bounces away like that. And hopefully, that should, yeah, hopefully he can get out of there scot-free. Sweet. I'm actually doing a lot better here than I normally do. I don't know, I guess it's just the luck of the draw. Oh, how skillful are you feeling today? Oh, apparently... <laughs> apparently not skillful enough... To, or skillful enough to get hit by a bot twice. Jeez. Alright, I might as well pick up this fairy, because we're nearing the end of the dungeon here anyways, and I'm never going to come back to get it again, so... Better now than never. Yeah, here's another iron knuckle. Even in like small quarters like this, this trick still works. Even if the uh, if it's just like a two-block high corridor, you can actually make it work. If you there's just kind of a, like a trick with your finger they have to do with that. I'll show that later when I actually encounter uh, an iron knuckle in that position. Yeah, those style flows are easy. Oh, because you get you get the you get a right stab at their weak point. Alright, this guy's through a door. Oh, not that that makes him much more of a challenge, though. Yeah, this first palace isn't all that bad. It's not until Palace 3, I think, that you'll actually start to notice the difficulty, because in Palace 3 is when they introduce the blue iron knuckles, which are downright one of the worst enemies in the game. Them and those, like, crocodile axe murderer things. Those are, those are so bad. Oh, 
Oh, but I'm spoiling too much. Well, I'm not really spoiling much. I'm just spoiling the enemies. It's not like this game has any plot to spoil either. They they basically told you the whole plot at the very beginning of the game at the title screen. All right, so this is our boss here. This is horse head, and you want to stab him in the head, not but not like that. You need to get closer to him than that. Crap. Oh, dude, I suck. Yeah, he's kind of like an iron knuckle the way you attack him, but he's a bit taller. So you actually want to stab bef a slightly before you reach the arc of your jump. And then you should get him just fine. And then just back away. Just like you do with an iron knuckle. And... There you go. You're kind of just trying to stab just a bit above his head. Maybe aim for his ears. I don't know. And there we go. And that's palace number one. And once you complete a palace, you'll put this crystal in this weird statue. And when you do this, it'll actually fill up all of your magic, all of your life, and all of your experience. So that's really good. You get basically a free level for that. So you, you want to make sure that you have, like, a... Uh, like, if you're just, like, a few experience points away from leveling up before you're about to put the crystal in the statue, you'll probably want to go back in the dungeon and find some monsters to kill just to get to that level. Instead of, like, wasting the crystal and just getting, like, 10 or 15 experience from the crystal. Because that would suck. All right, yeah, see, now these caverns are a lot lighter. So it's, there's a lot more navigable now. Mm. Geez, 16 and a half minutes? What the hell have I been doing? Oh, I got too into the game and I just... I just went crazy with it. Well, next time, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and venture on to the next town and maybe reach the second palace. Who knows? Though the way I'm planning to do this, we probably won't. So... I hope you enjoyed this first episode, and yeah, thanks everyone for watching, this is Argon Matrix signing out, thank you and good night.